What's going on today? Uh, this is David again. It's going to bring you another video. Uh, this video is going to be called uh, The Formation of a Child. Um, I thought to make this video, I was going to do it a while ago, like last year or so, year before, or something like that. I've been putting it together here and there um, to help those who follow this channel to understand the thought process of a Heavenly Father and uh, the birth of children. Uh, that you are a spirit, you are a soul, you are ordained from the very beginning before your mother and father even approached each other to bring you forth you are already set up for that time to come so I just want to let you know and warn you that the thought process that you, if you, the thought process of the beast thought process, what people think is exalted here is against the Lord okay and you understand what this video means uh, as I teach it it's not going to be that long the formation of a child that's right first and foremost let's give all praise to the most high God Yahweh Bahashem Yahavashai let's give all praise to you lost sheep of the house of Israel and mankind who fears God the formation of a child first we're going to do a little Matthew because you must know the treasure it's from our Father who is in heaven to bring forth his word on the earth. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 11 real quick. Uh, Christ talks about it. It's a treasure hunt. Right? The word is in heaven. It's on the earth to teach you the truth in pieces. That's right. I'm going to read Matthew again, and I was, there's a bunch of spots. You know, I always go back to books after I've studied other stuff for a while and taught some other stuff, and I go back to it, and you'll start. The more you learn, the more um, your understanding gets enhanced as you go back, right? You you think you missed them. You just weren't supposed to learn it at that time. So you go back to it, and you then things become even more clear. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But let's get to uh, Matthew chapter 11, and we're going to get into the formation of a child. Matthew chapter 11, let's start at verse 25 through 30. At that time, Yahweh answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent. Right, because I'm going to be reading out of Chronicles of Jeremiah, Enoch, Jeremiah, Apocalypse of Sedrach. Um, the Lord is the, the Father has hidden the truth from the wise and the prudent. Your so-called scholars, educators, theologians, church pastors, camp leaders. Um, he's only given it to the men that he deems that are good in his sight. Let's keep reading. And has revealed them unto babes. Right. Revealed it to babes, people who you would not respect, think, have any knowledge, but who are hungry for the milk, the truth, right? He's hid these things from everybody else. He's hid this. They don't understand that it's separated. They don't get it because the Father has hid it from these people out here. And he's only revealed it to us to have the understanding that the Almighty Power has power on earth. And so anything... That he is ordained to be done is going to be done. Right? Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. This is the good route. It's, this, is, this is the uh, covert option, I, I guess you could say. Right? All things are delivered unto me of my Father. Right? Everything that is given to Yahweh Shai, the elect man of God, king to come, is given unto the Father, by the Father. No man knoweth the Son but the Father. Right, the Father knows the Son, Yahweh and He knows His sons that are on the earth, who He's ordained to have this knowledge. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son. Right, only the only the Father's revealed Himself to the sons. Right, and He to whomsoever the Son will reveal Him. Right, so you must learn of the Father through the Son. Right. Yahweh is the perfect example. Well, He is who the Father is well pleased with. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Right. You are laboring and you are heavy laden because your life intensifies. The more you know this truth, 
The more you understand the truth from the beginning, the more you're going to despise the world that you see and your life intensifies. Your views about this world intensifies and it becomes a burden in a sense. It's like heavy. It's a heavy burden because you're dealing with all the nonsense, right? You know what things are supposed to be and they're not. And you have to tolerate it, right? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, right? Learn of your Lord. Take the yoke. The yoke is you putting, doing this labor, right? You're doing the labor. No one else is laboring like you, right? That's the yoke. You're under the yoke of your Lord because not only do you labor and it's heavy laden, you just love it because you just enjoy it, right? It's like your passion in a sense. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Right. The yoke is easy, and the burden is light. Um, the, the men of the Lord are called with death. Right. They're going to eventually, some make a decision, like just like Lazarus, um, to leave it all. Right. The men of the, men of the, from the Father, uh, the chosen men, they, they lose their lives for this truth. Uh, they don't like it here. <laughs> That's right. So let's get it, man. Uh, formation of a child. Uh, how you came to the earth. Uh, the way people, how they thinking out here is air. Don't, don't, don't um, even acknowledge their thought. Chronicles of Jeremiah. Let's read. Chapter 9. I will now proceed to explain the formation of the fetus which God created when man approaches his wife. Right. It's all you you're already ordained. That's right. God indicates it to the angel appointed over conception, whose name is they say Layla, but I'm not buying that. God says, Know that this night a woman will conceive, take this sperm and place it in thy hand and break it on the threshing floor into 365 particles. He does so. He then takes the sperm in his hand and brings it to God and says, O Lord of the world, I have done as thou hast commanded me, and now decree what is to become of it. God then decrees that it will be either strong or weak, male or female, rich or poor, beautiful or ugly, long or short, wicked or righteous. That's right. God then makes a sign to the angel appointed over spirits and says, Bring me a certain spirit which is hidden in the Garden of Eden. That's right. The Lord of Spirits. Whose name is so-and-so and whose form is so-and-so. This applies to all the spirits which are destined to be created. For from the very moment when the world was created, all these spirits were prepared for men. As it is said, What has already been created, what has already been has been called by name. That's right. You've already been ordained from the start to be here. So you running into this truth was ordained for you from the beginning. Shake it. You're not going to be able to shake it. You can't shake it. The angel brings the said spirit, which when it comes before God, bows down and prostrates itself before him. At that moment, God says to the spirit, enter thou, enter thou this sperm. The spirit then opens its mouth and says, O Lord of the universe, I am satisfied with the world in which I have lived from the day on which thou didst create me. If it please thee, do not suffer me to enter this impure being, for I am holy and pure. God replies, The world which I will cause thee to enter is better than the world in which thou hast lived. And when I created thee, I created thee only for this purpose. God then causes it to enter this new being against its will. That's right, because the spirit in you does not want to be here. <laughs> he's, he's cool in the garden, right? The angel then returns and causes it to enter the womb of its mother. Two angels are prepared to watch the embryo during pregnancy. A light shines upon the head of the child by which it sees from one end of the world to the other. In the morning, the angel takes it, carries it into the Garden of Eden, and shows it the righteous men who sit there in glory with crowns on their heads. 
The angel then says to the soul, My child, dost thou know who these are? No, replies. The angel then says, These people whom thou seest here were formed like thee in the womb of their mother. They went forth into the world and observed God's statutes. Therefore, they became worthy of this bliss. N know also that thou wilt at the end of thy days depart from the world. And if thou wilt be taught worthy to hearken unto the law and the commandments, then thou wilt will be, <clears throat> excuse me, then thou wilt be likewise worthy of sitting with these in the place where I have showed thee. That's right. So it's, it's learning what it should be doing before it enters the world. That's right. In the evening he carries it into again Hinnom and shows it the sinners whom the wicked angels beat with fiery staves. They cry, woe, woe, but no mercy is shown them. The angel then says to the soul, Dost thou know, my child, whose these are that burn? No, replies. The angel answers, answers, These were of the same mean origin as thou art. They went forth into the world and did not observe the commandments and judgments of God. Therefore, they have come to this place of punishment. Know also, child, that thou must ultimately quit this world. The angel walks about with it from morning until evening and shows it every place which it is destined to tread and the place where it will be buried. After this, he shows it the world of the good and the world of the wicked. And in the evening, he places it back again in the womb of its mother. God then encloses it with folded doors, as it is said, and he shut in the sea with doors until it burst forth from the womb and become, became free. It is further said, I will lay my words in thy mouth, and I will protect thee in the shadow of my hand. God then said, Thus far shalt thou go, and no further. And he sustains the child in the womb of its mother for nine months. At the end of that time, the same angel comes and says to it, Come forth, for the time has come for thee to go forth into the world. It replies, Have I not already told God that I am satisfied to remain in the place where I am accustomed to dwell? He, and he replied, the place I will cause thee to enter is better than the world from which thou hast come. Now that it pleases me to remain here, why dost thou wish, wish to remove me hence? The angel replies, Thou must know that thou was formed in the womb of thy mother against thy will. That's right. That's why you don't celebrate birthdays. <laughs> it's not a happy time here. That's right. And now know that thy against thy will will be born and will come forth into the world. He then immediately strikes it, extinguishes the light, and brings it forth against its will. It forgets whatever it had seen. That's right. You forget everything that the angel was showing you before you enter the world. As soon as it comes forth into the world, it cries. That's right. That's why when babies are born, they cry. Mm-hmm. They don't want to be here. That's right. And why does it cry? Because of the world it has left behind. For at that moment, seven new worlds are awaiting it. That's right. And the first world is like unto a king after, after whose welfare all people ask. All desire to see it and embrace it and kiss it, because it is in the first year. In the second world, it is like unto a swine, which wallows in mire. A child does the same until it reaches two years. In the third world is like unto a kid that skips and gambles about on the meadows. Thus a child skips about here and there until it is five years of age. In the fourth world is like unto a horse which strides along howdily. In the same way does a child walk along proud of his youth until he is eighteen years old. In the fourth, fifth world he is like unto an ass upon whose shoulders burdens are placed. That's right, you start working and trying to survive. <clears throat> In the same manner burdens are heaped unto man's shoulders. He is given a wife by whom he begets children. He must wander to and fro in order to obtain food for them until he is about 40 years old. In the sixth stage, he is like unto a dog, insolent and wandering about in all places for food, stealing and robbing in one place and enjoying it in another. In the seventh stage, he is like unto an ape, whose appearance is changed in every respect. All the household curse him and desire his death. Even the young children make fun of him. And even the smallest birds wakes him from his sleep. 
Finally, that time arrives for him to quit the world. When that time arrives, the same angel comes beside him and says to him, What is thy name? To which he replies, So and so. And why dost thou come to me today to take thee away from this world? When he hears this, he weeps, and his voice reaches from one end to the world to the other, but no creature hears his voice except the cock. The chick there was a rooster. Have I already told thee, he says, not to bring me forth from the world in which I have lived? But the angel replies, Have I not already told thee that against thy will thou was created, against thy will thou was born, against thy will thou livest, and against thy will thou shalt die? Also against thy will thou art bound to render account and reckoning before him who has who said, and the world was made. Right, you're gonna you're gonna the day of reckoning for you is to come. Behold, these are the four divine hosts which God showed Elijah the prophet, as it is said. And he said, Go out, stand upon the mountain before God. God then said to Elijah, Behold, these are the four worlds through which man must pass. The great and strong wind is this world. After the wind comes the earthquake, and after the world comes death which causes the whole body of man to quake. What's right? After the earthquake comes the fire. After that death, there follows the judgment, which is fire. And after the judgment, there follows a voice, as it is said, a still, soft voice, which is the voice of the last judgment. After this follows the judgment of the spirits that filth about in the air, and no one is left except God. As it is said, God alone shall be exalted on that day. All this included in the wor words of holy tradition spoken by David, king of Israel, who said, I was made in secret. I was formed in the nethermost parts of the world. That's right. You were made in secret. That's right. So when they try to tell you in this world that that's not murder to remove a, a, a seed at a certain time, wrong. That's right. Let's get it, man. All the great men of the Lord knew they were born in secret. They knew how they got here. The Epistle of Barnabas, chapter 19, verse 5. Thou shalt not doubt whether a thing shall be or not be. That's right. Don't doubt this truth. Don't doubt that you are here for this purpose. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. Thou shalt love thy neighbor more than thine own soul. Thou shalt not murder a child by abortion. That's right. Nor again shalt thou kill it when it is born. Thou shalt not withhold thy hand from thy son or daughter. For from their youth thou shalt teach them the fear of God. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Murder. The Apocalypse of Peter. Mm -hmm. Some of this is difficult to read, but I'm going to get through it. And over against that place I saw another squalid, and it was the place of punishment. And those who were punished there, and the punishing angels had their raiment dark like the air of a place. And there were certain there hanging by the tongue, and these were blasphemers of the ways of the righteous of righteousness. And under them lay fire, burning and punishing them. And there was a great lake full of flaming mire, that's right, in which certain men that pervert righteousness and tormenting angels afflicted them. You pervert righteousness. And there were also others, women, hanged by their hair over the mire that bubbled up. And these were they who adorned themselves for adultery. And the men who mingled with them in the defilement of adultery were hanging by the feet and their heads in that mire. And I said, I did not believe that I should come into this place. Right, because Peter's sin was adultery. That's right. Mm -hmm. He didn't believe he had come there. He was chosen out of it. The Lord showed him mercy. Let's read. And I saw the murderers... And those who conspired with them cast into a certain pl certain straight place full of evil snakes and spitten by those beasts and thus turning to and fro in that punishment and worms as it were clouds of darkness afflicted them. And the souls of the murdered 
stood and looked upon the punishment of those murderers and said, O oh God, thy judgment is just. That's right. And near that place I saw another straight place in tow with, into which the gore and the filth of those who were being punished ran down and became there as it was like a lake. And there sat women having the gore up into their necks and over against them sat many children who were born to them out of due time crying and they came forth and there came forth from them sparks of fire and smote the women in the eyes. And these were the cursed who conceived and caused abortion. That's right. Mm -hmm. If you don't know how the child is formed, you don't know what you're doing. Repent. That's right. And other men and women were burned up to the middle and were cast into a dark place and were beaten by evil spirits. And their inwards were eaten by restless worms. And these were they who persecuted the righteous and delivered them up. Right. So when you get delivered up one day. Right. This is the punishment for them. Who are going to deliver you up. And near those there were again women and men gnawing their own lips and being punished and receiving a red hot iron in their eyes. And these were they who blasphemed and slandered the way of righteousness. And over against these again, other men and women gnawing their tongues and having flaming fire in their mouths. And these were the false witnesses. That's right. These are the false prophets and witnesses out here telling you that the Lord has revealed himself to them. And in certain other places, there were pebbles sharper than swords or any spit, red hot. And women and men in tattered and filthy raiment rolled about on them in punishment. And these were the rich who trusted in their riches and had no pity for orphans and widows and despised the commandment of God. That's right. Let's get it, man. Enoch. Mm -hmm. Chapter 39. Verses 6 through 13. And in that place mine eyes saw the elect one of righteousness and of faith, and I saw his dwelling place under the wings of the Lord of Spirits. And righteousness shall prevail in his days. That's right. Righteousness shall prevail. All this truth is going to prevail and flood and drown the earth. Let's read. And the righteous and elect shall be without number before him forever and ever. That's right. And all the righteous and the elect before him shall be strong as fiery lights. And their mouth shall be full of blessing. And their lips extol the name of the Lord of spirits. And righteousness before him shall never fail. And uprightness shall never fail before him. There I wish to dwell, and my spirit long for that dwelling place. And there, and there heretofore hath been my portion, for so has it been established concerning me, before the Lord of Spirits, right? You've been ordained to be chosen. Enoch and everyone else who is upright and righteous. In those days, I praise and extol the name of the Lord of Spirits with blessings and praises because he had destined me for blessing and glory according to the good pleasure of the Lord of Spirits. For a long time, my eyes regarded that place and I blessed him and praised him saying, blessed is he. And may he be blessed from the beginning and forevermore. And before him there is no ceasing. He knows before the world was created what is forever and what will be from generation unto generation. Those who sleep not bless thee. Right, you stay sleeping, you don't bless the Lord. They stand before thy glory and bless, praise, and extol, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of spirits. He filled the earth with spirits. That's right. And here my eyes saw all those who sleep not. They stand before him and bless and say, Blessed be thou, and blessed be the name of the Lord forever and ever. And my face was changed, for I could no longer behold. Jeremiah. <clears throat> That's right. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 19. For I form thee in the belly, I knew thee. 
That's right. You've been ordained for this. It's true. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priest that were in Anatoth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. That's right. Because you're already ordained before you reach flesh. That's right. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. That's right. You've been ordained to be a prophet unto the nations. That's right. Then said I, our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child, because he's a babe, right? But the father's already ordained him. He's going to get this milk. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Right, whatever the Lord commands you, what has been ordained for you, that's what you're going to speak. You were once a babe, and now you got the knowledge of your heavenly father. Let's read. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. That's right. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I see, I said, I see the rod of an almond tree. That's right. You got this rod which is in Enoch, I think it's 25. Then said the Lord unto me, thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. He's seeing the kingdom. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, what seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot, and the face thereof is toward the north. That's right, a seething pot. The, the wicked Israelites, you're going to be in this hot water. Then the Lord said unto me, Out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For lo, I will call all the families of the kings on the north, saith the Lord, and they shall come. And they shall shut every one his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem, and against the walls that are round about, and against all the cities of Judah. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness, who have forsaken me, and have burned incense unto other gods, and worship the works of their own hands. Thou therefore gird up thy loins, and arise, and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city, and an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. Right, you're going to be face to face with your people. That's right. Psalms chapter 139. Verses 1 through 24, King David. Let's read. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but Lord, O Lord, thou, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, it is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thou hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. 
If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light unto me. That's right. Because he got this truth. Yea, the darkness hideth, hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret, and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. That's right, because the, the true men of the Lord, they come to the lowest parts, the ghettos. That's right. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book, all my members were written, which is continuance, were, which in which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God! Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men! For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? Am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. That's right. Mm -hmm. Just like your spirit and your soul is brought here before the flesh, it's going to depart from the flesh and go back to where it's, where it's supposed to go, what path you chose. Let's read. The Apocalypse of Said Rob. Mm -hmm. And God said to his only begotten son, Go, take the soul of Said Rock, my beloved. And place it in paradise. The only begotten son saith the said rock, Give me the trust which our father deposited in the womb of thy mother, in the holy tabernacle of thy body from a child. That's right, deposited in the womb. Said rock saith, I will not give thee my soul. God saith to him, And wherefore was I sent to come hither, and thou pleadest against me? For I was commanded by my father not to take thy soul with violence. That's right. The Lord takes you out with violence. But if not, then give me thy most greatly desired soul. Greatly desired. It's all about souls. You want to bring those souls back to the father. That's what we are doing here. Bringing back souls to the father. The greatly desired souls that were ordained from the beginning to get this knowledge and to hearken to every idle command. What does the Lord say? Blessed are those who are not offended in me, those who understand the doctrine from the beginning. And said, Rock saith to God, And whence do thou intend to take my soul, and from which limb? And God saith to him, Do thou not know that it is placed in the midst of thy lungs? and thy heart, and is dispersed into all thy limbs. It is brought up through the throat and gullet, and the mouth, and whatever hour it is predestined to come forth, it is scattered, and brought together from the points of the nails, and from all the limbs. And there is a great necessity that it should be separated from the body, and parted from the heart. That's right. When Sadrach had heard all these things, and had considered the memory of death, he was greatly astounded. And Sadrach saith to God, O Lord, give me a little respite that I may weep, for I have heard that tears are able to do much, and much remedy comes to the lowly body of thy creature. That's right. Formation of a child. Don't take on the thoughts of this world and what people think. Everything here in the beast and who's taught by the beast is of Satan. Let's give all praise to the Most High God, Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh and all praise to you, lost sheep of the house of Israel, and mankind who fears God. Shalom.